please tell us something about your musical education. My musical education? Well, it started at age six in the church choir, mm -hmm. the Episcopal Church in Virginia, wow. in the States. I, I knew, I had listened to music, I'd never performed it, I'd never read music, and the choir master there was actually teaching us to read music, and he put a, he put a note upon a staff, and it was a whole note, just a circle, and he said, who knows what note this is? And I was like, it's an O note. That was, that was the beginning of <laughs> my wrong answers. And uh, yeah, the piano lessons, high school band and orchestra, rock bands, and then um, I ended up at uh, New York University in, uh, in Manhattan studying music and music technology. And I quickly uh, discovered I, I wasn't that thrilled with the, with the school and I got an internship at a recording studio and that ended up launching my career in the music business. And so I worked in New York for many years as a keyboard player, programmer, uh, producer, uh, remixer, doing mostly uh, mostly dance music, mm -hmm. like different flavors of house music. Wow. And that carried me all the way up through uh, the early 2000s, and the music industry started to go through a lot of changes, and I thought it was time for me to look into something else, and I moved to Los Angeles and started sniffing around the film and television industry. Mm -hmm and then uh, slowly have worked my way to the point where I'm getting invited to Soundtrack Cologne. And yeah, what was your first project as a film composer? Well, you know, my, my path was doing additional composing mm -hmm. for other more established composers. And so I worked for um, a guy named Michael Levine on a television show called Cold Case. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this was in, this started in 2006. And yeah, he, he, he took me in and, and I knew only just a little bit about scoring, but I knew a lot about like writing music and production and four seasons, and 90 episodes later, mm -hmm. I, had, uh, I had learned a lot, quite a lot of, about it. And that was, that was the beginning. Great. And yeah, what is for you the fascinating of film music? What is fascinating about it? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, uh, there's something about, that's a good, that's a good question. I find that, that, that film music uh, offers a lot of room for creativity. Uh, I mean, all, all types of music can allow for, for creativity, but so, some of the more like, interesting creative music might go unknown. You know, people release it, you never hear of it, it doesn't, it doesn't become popular. But interesting, creative, adventurous music can make it into a film or a television show that, that becomes very, very popular. Lots of people see it and hear the music. And um, I, find that, I find that pretty interesting and, and exciting. Mm -hmm. So in general, what is inspiring you? Can you be more specific? Yeah, yeah well, uh, when you compose and have <laughs> no idea, so what did, did you do? Okay, what inspired? Well, I mean, it's a it's a lot of a lot of things. The beginning of any project, there's there's always a number of people involved. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the creator of the show or the film. There can be picture editors, and everybody's sort of throwing ideas into a big hat mm -hmm. to see like what where are we going to go with this? What's going to be the sound for this particular project? And so so right there. There's there's a little inspiration already about about the, these discussions, this collaboration of of where the sound will begin, and then I start to I read a script, I get an idea of the story, I start to see stuff they send me, maybe a rough cut, and I start to see the performances of the actors and the camera work. And so all of that together is the uh, is the beginning inspiration to write the first the first pieces of music that will hopefully uh, turn into the sound of. Mm -hmm of the show. It's a, you know, it can be a little daunting, mm -hmm. you know, because there's all those things there that I mentioned, they're all there to help and to inspire, but there's still this blank page mm -hmm. that's sitting there, very blank, and and it, it can be it can be a little scary no matter how many times I confront the blank page. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, what am I going to do this time? Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's fresh in my mind because I've just done it now with this new season of American Horror Story. Every season has to be completely different, and um, so there was a blank page about a month ago, mm -hmm. and now it's not blank anymore. And so there was some inspiration, there was collaboration, and now we have we have a sound, and we're moving forward. But 
there's a that that moment of how will we do it again this time? So it's a little little stressful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how is the work on American Horror Story? So uh, what was your approach? How how did you get to the project? The the way I got to the project was sort of a Hollywood fairy tale story mm -hmm. <laughs> because um, I had uh, met one of uh, Ryan Murphy's producers who works on American Horror Story. I had met her uh, six months before they they asked me to, 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 to give them something and just out of, I hadn't heard from her in six months, I get a phone call, hey we're going in a different direction on American Horror Story this season, would you be interested in writing a piece of music for us this afternoon? Oh. <laughs> Why yes I would. Mm -hmm. I wrote the piece of music, she loved it, the next morning they played it for Ryan, I got another phone call. Can I speak to the new composer of American Horror Story? I mean, it wasn't even 24 <laughs> hours, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was on season four, Freak Show. So that's how it started. And then every, you know, every season, it's, it's a completely different story, different characters, maybe different time period. They want the music to be different. Mm -hmm. And so we, it's like we start over. It's like it's a new show every, every season. Oh. And uh, yeah, how many time do you get for for one episode? Well, it it varies. Typically, the first episode, you know, in my experience, on any show, the, you have more time on that first episode, mm -hmm. and then as each episode comes in, the time gets shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. So you get further down the season, they, they maybe have a week. Oh. But yeah, that first episode, I mean, this time probably spent maybe three weeks, almost a month on the first episode. Mm -hmm. But then, then the second episode comes in, so then you're working on finishing the first episode and starting the second episode. They overlap anywhere from three weeks to one week, sort of, sort of average. Mm -hmm. And it seems uh, that it's very important uh, in your music that, uh, to cre uh, create a good atmosphere. Is this a kind of music that you prefer, or do, do, or do you want to do something di different, more themes, or do you love to make atmospheric sounds? Um, I, I do, yeah, I have, a, I have a fondness for atmospheric sounds. I got to, uh, this, the second composer that I, that I was fortunate enough to work with mm -hmm. as an additional composer is Cliff Martinez, mm -hmm. which I, you know, is known for the atmospheric sounds. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I was such a fan of his by, when, I, when I first met him and then got to work with him. So it was pretty exciting that we both share that enthusiasm for atmospheric sounds, which I think we both trace back to our love of Brian Eno. Mm -hmm. He's like the grandfather of atmospheric sounds. But, you know, I love, I love being challenged. I love doing other, other things. And uh, a show that I did for Ryan Murphy a year and a half ago was very, very different than anything I'd done before. Feud, Betty and Joan. Mm -hmm. And it was a period orchestral score, like a 60s orchestral score. So there was not one synthesizer or atmospheric sound to be found on the, mm -hmm. entire, on the entire score. And it was, um, it was uncomfortable and challenging, but... Ultimately, uh, it felt good to to get, to get outside my my normal box. Mm -hmm. So the, um, yeah, days before I listened to uh, Mr. Robert, and uh, yeah, it's kind of hypnotic. <laughs> I, I I love this score, and uh, yeah, it has a lot of well, strange or something. Uh, strange. Strange titles. So like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so why such titles uh, for that uh, for tracks? Um, well. Uh, <laughs> I think ultimately we're just trying to be arty, arty, mm -hmm. artsy, but the titles are following the naming convention for the episodes. That's mm -hmm. how they've named the episodes of the show. Mm -hmm. So there's always a number mm -hmm. that represents what episode it is, and then the the actual name of the episode is is done in this um, leet speak, like popular with hackers, where mm -hmm. some some letters are replaced by numbers. And then they would always have a file extension, mm -hmm. uh, like it was some sort of video file, mm -hmm. and that was sort of the what they did for the episodes. So mm -hmm. we thought, let's do it for the for the music, mm -hmm. and it is a pr pretty much the same system. It always starts with a number, which shows what episode it is, and then the next number is what number track it is in the episode, mm -hmm. at least for the soundtrack. We didn't put every piece on, but. Um, and then the name would be in that same leet speak, and then I I would do um, I would go and search for audio file extensions, mm -hmm. which apparently there's I mean there's just dozens and dozens, we we all know like a wave file or an MP3 file, but there's 
dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of audio file extensions. So it's been sort of fun, like creating these names and finding these random audio file extensions. And um, the the record label was was not like thrilled with it because the names are, are unconventional mm -hmm. and they're thinking you know oh the apple itunes store is gonna spit <laughs> these back they're not gonna be happy with this and mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's 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 turned out okay it didn't break the internet so i think it's i think we're okay <laughs> so as, a, as a first seed as a uh, thank you, award it was a great, it's a great idea yeah yeah and you know when i when <laughs> i refer to the pieces I'm i'm not referring to all the extra I'm not saying, oh, well, that's 3.0-1, one mm -hmm. to blame dot AVC. <laughs> I'm just saying that's one to blame. You know, mm -hmm. I'll just call it by its proper English name. Mm -hmm. And how did you uh, come uh, up with the ideas uh, for Mr. Robert? I, I mean, again, uh, collaboration with the creator, Sam Esmail. Mm -hmm. He's very hands-on with music. He, you know, he knew from the very beginning he wanted a very electronic score. Mm -hmm. And so I started writing music, and it just sort of evolved out of out of that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, more general, uh, what do you think is the best thing about composing? Um, wow, what is the best thing about composing? Uh, I mean, I just I love I love music. I love I love creating music. Spending spending that like that's my job that mm -hmm. I get to create music, and um, I feel very fortunate for that. And it's, uh, I've been doing it for a long time in many different ways, and it still excites me. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, just, I guess it's just for the love of it. Mm -hmm. Great. And is there something that makes it less fun for you? Less fun. Mm -hmm. um, well, it can, it can get stressful mm -hmm. with the deadlines, you know, the short time to do something, the... You know, the producers that I work for, um, most of the time they're quite happy, mm -hmm. but occasionally they'll, you know, like, this, this, this isn't quite right, I'll send it back and I'll, I'll do something new to it, and they're like, no, no still not. You know, many, many revisions later, you know, time is running out, that can, can get a little frustrating. But yeah, that, that's, that's about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's really the pressure and the stress that can be not as good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost at the end, uh, what are your current uh, current projects? Well, I am working on um, two shows at the moment for Ryan Murphy. Mm -hmm. The uh, eighth season of American Horror Story and the second season of 911, mm -hmm. one of his new shows. And just about to start um, yet another new Ryan Murphy show. He can't stop making shows. It's, mm -hmm. quite, it's quite incredible. Um, it's called The Politician. Mm -hmm. So that's probably right when I return to the States, I'll begin on that one. Oh, so you work on a three series? Uh, <laughs> which, which is a lot, and uh, I don't think I've done more than three at a time. That, oh. gets, that gets pretty hectic. Mm -hmm. So you work uh, alone, or have an assistant, additional composer, or something? Um, I do have an assistant, mm -hmm. and um, on 911, um, I actually, have, for the first time, I have a co-composer. Mm -hmm. So there's actually two of us sharing the the composing on that show mm -hmm. and that that's, that makes it a little more a little more manageable it's like mm -hmm. it's a ha half a show for me to work on instead of the whole show mm -hmm. so i guess once the politician is going I'll, i'll really be working on two and a half shows instead of three it should be should be manageable mm -hmm. sounds great